It will be interesting to hear what is the view of such regarding the shape of the world. To describe this, I cannot do better than refer you to Mr. Elliot, an American aeronaut, who, in a letter giving an account of his ascension from Baltimore, USA, thus speaks of the appearance of the Earth from an elevated balloon. Quote, I don't know that I ever hinted heretofore that the aeronaut may well be the most skeptical man about the rotundity of the Earth. Philosophy imposes the truth upon us, but the view of the Earth from the elevation of a balloon is that of an immense terrestrial basin, the deeper part of which is that directly under one's feet. As we ascend, the earth beneath us seems to recede, actually to sink away, while the horizon gradually and gracefully lifts a diversified slope stretching away farther and farther to a line that, at the highest elevation, seems to close with the sky. Thus, upon a clear day, the aeronaut feels as if suspended at about an equal distance between the vast blue oceanic concave above and an equally expanded terrestrial basin below. Another gentleman, Mr. Gleischer, of the Royal Observatory, says, The horizon always appears on a level with the car. The following diagram illustrates the phenomena observed by these and other aeronauts. The horizon, AB, is always on a level with the eye at any altitude, and the earth, a, C, B, seems like a great basin beneath the balloon. This is what should be observed in accordance with the laws of perspective at an elevation above a plane surface. But if the Earth were a globe, the horizon would gradually fall away from the observer and would naturally dip downwards more and more as he ascended, so that the supposed curvature of the Earth's surface should be distinctly visible at great altitudes, if it existed. As no dip of the horizon is seen, and no curvature observed anywhere, we are bound to conclude that the Earth is not a globe, but that, as already proved by observations and experiments, it is a vast extended plane.